This is an interview that we're making with our new resident teacher, Geshe Jampagelik. He's one of the great Geshe's who comes from Sarah J. And he came here especially to teach the master's program and specifically the subject of Tantra. First of all, we want to say good morning and we want to ask Geshe Lam, where did you speak where did you spend the first part of your life where did you pass the early years of your life and did you have a large family with many brothers and sisters ah any karsugo ta tiri de karsugo ta chi here today at this center, they've, you've asked me to speak about my life, and I'm very happy to have this opportunity. My name is Champa Gelik. I come from the eastern part of Tibet in Kham. This is where there's the Sotseldre Monastery and I was born in 1966. I was born into a family. That in the past was one of the one of the most important families of that particular village. However, after the events with the Chinese, my family became very poor, like all the other families, because the Chinese took everything away. My parents had many sons and daughters. They had ten children. One of these, one of the children died when I was very young. Uh, so, so we had, uh, had five brothers, we were five brothers and five sisters. One of my brothers died and so there were nine of us left. I'm the eighth one and so there are just two, I just have two younger brothers. When I was born, my older brothers and sisters already had lives with their other families. When we were young, when we were small in Tibet, the Chinese, we had a very difficult situation with very little to eat and very little to live on. Therefore, when I was very young, I. I went to a small school in my village. I went there for three years, from the time that I was nine until I was eleven, and there I learned how to read and write. In that period, all the members of the family had to work because we were really very poor. So until I have, until I was sixteen, I, w I was also in charge of taking care of the animals which I had to take out for grazing. So the period when I lived in Tibet, I didn't have I didn't have much opportunity to study Dharma. But around the beginning of the nineteen eighties. The Chinese showed a little bit of a, of a more relaxed attitude and they allowed me to become a monk. From when I was very young, my mother told me that I was different from the others. She said I was more intelligent and she wanted me to become a monk. And so this was my mother's great desire. Well, on the other hand, my father and my other brothers didn't want me to become a monk. 
and bec but because my mother had a very strong character, she brought me to Lhasa. And one of my one of my brothers was also studying at Sera. When my mother brought me there, as soon as I saw Sarah, I wanted to become a monk and I wanted to study the Dharma. But in that period, just just like now, there were many problems within the monasteries because they're under the complete control of the Chinese who created many problems uh, for, for myself as well. They said, you'll become a monk, but you can't just stay in the monastery. You have to have many different permits from t many different offices. It was an infinite bureaucracy. So I returned to come, and I went to the local offices. And I asked them for the certificate of permission to become a monk at Sera, but they didn't give it to me immediately. In, in our birthplace, there was a monastery with the local lama. And this lama had previously studied. He studied at Sera, and then when the Chinese arrived, he he opposed them and ended up spending 20 years in prison. And this Lama, he was able to go to India and he met the Dalai Lama and then he returned to Tibet. And this Lama, he told me, go to India. He said, if you go to India, you'll have much more freedom. Instead, if you remain in Tibet, then you'll have many difficulties. And therefore, at that time, I had a great desire. I had a great desire to go to India. At that time, I had 16 years according to the Western calendar, but Tibetans, we also count one year uh, while we're in the womb, so I had seven. I was 17 years old. I went to Lhasa and stayed there for two months, and I started to find friends to go to India with. I met some friends and we discussed the idea of going to India together. But we didn't have any visas or any documents. We didn't even have any, any way to, to get around. We just had our bags. And sometimes on the road we had to do hitchhiking and somebody would take us a few kilometers. But, the, but most of the trip, we did it by foot. So from Laza, we arrived at Shigate, and then we arrived in Drum, which is at the border. Since we didn't have documents, we didn't have documents or visas, so we had to go around the the border crossings, the the border posts. Some of these places were hidden in the in the forest. And we were dressed like we were dressed as the people from our from our country dress. So it was, it was easy to recognize us. The Chinese saw us immediately. And so in that moment, there were 
two other Chinese police officers who arrived behind us and they asked us, where were we going? Naturally, we, we couldn't say that we were going to India, so we said that we were going to Kailash. And so they told us, well, why are you going to Kailash? If you're going to Kailash, then what are you doing in the forest? Is Kailash in the forest? They asked us. So they captured us and they, they took us away, but we didn't we didn't give them the names of our other friends who were hidden, who had remained hidden in the forest. And at that time, it was a period. There were very few people crossing the border into India, unlike now. Therefore, the border was somewhat more relaxed, unlike the police today. So instead of taking us to prison, they brought us to a family that had a connection with the, with the people at the border. And so then we were put into, into the care of this family. We weren't allowed to leave. We had to be accompanied by the police if we wanted to go eat at the restaurant. And at a certain point they told us that there was a car that was going to take us to Shigatse. So that night, at two in the morning, we escaped. We escaped from where we were staying with the family. We escaped without the family knowing it. And since there's a lot of forest around there, as soon as we left the house, we, we hid in the forest and nobody could see us anymore. So at this point, we thought about the difficulty of crossing the border. And some of our some of our friends who were with us had families with children. And so we thought that instead of, we thought instead to go towards Kailash. And at that, it was, this was during the winter, and so the road to Kailash was closed. Some of my friends, and also how to maintain, how to take care of livestock and so forth, and so they, they managed to help some of the families, the nomad, the nomad families that were around there. And so with the others, I continued towards Kailash. And in September, I was still at Kailash and somebody arrived from India. And the, this man uh, was also going to do a pilgrimage and he also didn't have a visa. And so he explained to us the type of, of street that we, the type of road that we needed in order to 
arrive at Kailash. And then he also, and, and how to get to Pokhara in Nepal from Kailash. And then Pokhara, they gave us, he gave us names of some Tibetan families in Pokhara. So when I arrived, I was one of the first refugees in the 80s to arrive in Nepal. So there wasn't, there wasn't, uh, at that time, there wasn't a reception office for refugees. And, at, and I met some Tibetan friends who helped me then. And these person, these people told me, don't become a monk, go to school, it's better. But from the time that I was young, my mother, my mother had told me to become a monk. And when I told her that I was going to India to become a monk, she was very happy. So once once I arrived in India, if I had if I had not become a monk and I decided to go to school, I would have made my mother very unhappy. And so I thought of going directly to Sarah Monastery. When I managed to leave to, from the time that I left Tibet to the time I got to Sarah, it was one year. And when I arrived at Sarah, I wasn't I wasn't a monk yet. And after two months, I arrived. Oh, after two months, His Holiness the Dalai Lama came to Gyume Monastery nearby. And so I became, with His Holiness, first I took the Getsul ordination and then Gelung ordination. This was in 1983, and then in 1984, His Holiness came again to Sarah. At that time I was 19 years old. In general, you're supposed to be 20 years old to become a Gelong. But even though I was only 19, even though I was only 19, he gave me the permission to become a Gelong. So I was very lucky to once again receive ordination from His Holiness. At this point, Geshe-la, um, what type of study, what type of study did you do in the monastery? And who were your main teachers? We'd also like to know if there are any particularly meaningful episodes in relation to your studies. And also, if you had the opportunity to study with Kintsu Jampa Tekchok. As soon as I arrived at Sarah, my teacher, 
My first teacher was an ex-abbot of Kham, Losang Paldin of Sera Monastery. And so the first thing, for, I first listened to the philosophical subjects with him, such as uh, Dura, who collected topics. At that time, Cantor Jabatekchuk was here in the West, not at Sarah. And so at the beginning, I didn't have any opportunity to, to get teachings from Cantor Jabatekchuk. <laughs> Then in 1985, Kabje Chudun Rupeshe arrived from Tibet and he, he came to Sarah. And she is a Kizu Shamba Tinjo that Jazangi Kimbo Nare, any Pare Pesha Kimbo Lodus Nare, Dikaluya, any Chikimbo say that. When Chodun Rinpoche arrived, uh, we are from the we are from the same part of Sarah and also from the same part of Tibet. So from 1985 until now. <laughs> As far as the five treatises of Maitreya and Tantric studies and the other uh, subjects of study, I received all of these from Chodun Rinpoche. And following this, Kintur Jampa Tekchuk became the abbot of Sarah for seven years. Since, and since he was the abbot, he had many other jobs and tasks, so he wasn't able to teach. So even when he arrived as abbot, I didn't have the, I didn't receive teachings on the texts from him. However, Kenzo Rinpoche, since since Kintsur Jampa Tekchuk was one of the best abbots that we had at Sera, I have a particular sense of affection and respect for him, just as all the other monks of Sera do. My main my main practice of Guru devotion and my main practice of Guru Yoga. I do this in relation to His Holiness the Dalai Lama because I received ordination from him and the main part of the of teachings on Sutra and Tantra and initiation. So my main lamas, I have three lamas, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Chodun Rinpoche, and the first teacher who taught me at Sarah, who was the ex-abbot of Sarah. I've also received teachings and initiations from many other lamas. When I first arrived at Sarah, since there was a, a cultural difference and the climate in South India is completely different from that in Tibet, we had many problems. We had physical, many physical problems. And in fact, I developed a kind of allergy. Uh, and my face was covered with my face was covered with pimples. But despite having these problems, I was, I was always very happy. Because if somebody wants to practice Dharma, Sarah is the best place because you have an opportunity to, to study and practice continually. When we were young in Tibet, 
even if, even though we were at home, we were very afraid, and we had many dangers. Well, when we arrived in India, there was democracy, we could have freedom of speech, and so these fears disappeared. The principal thing I can say about my studies is that I always had a strong sensation of the importance of the precious human rebirth and of the great opportunity that I had. And I thought a great deal about impermanence and death. So I stayed at Sarah and I've also had many other opportunities to study literature, grammar, and other sciences in relation to Buddhism. But unfortunately, I've never had the opportunity, for example, to learn English. Thank you.